On this episode of the Chris Alley Real Estate Show, we're talking about how to choose a realtor when selling your home and out of the show. Welcome to the Chris Elliott Real Estate Show, where we bring you insights into the local Central Virginia real estate market, go in-depth to answer your real estate questions and concerns, and interview local figures and influencers in the greater Richmond area. And now, let's get to the latest episode with your host, Chris Elliott, and co-host, Matty Ray. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, today's going to be a fun show. It is. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the questions that you should be asking or thinking through uh, when choosing a realtor. But before we get into that, Madison, how have you been? Oh, I'm fantastic. That's good. How are you, Chris? We just had a little like a little back and forth before we hit the record button. Didn't we, we sure did. Yeah. 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 How um how's how's life been treating you? How's 2020 treating you? We're in February already. It's weird to think like March because I feel like March is like spring yeah starting of spring like that's in 30 days i was looking through facebook this morning and i was looking at the facebook yes the facebook i was looking through facebook this morning and i looked at like the birthdays and i was like wow i can't believe all these people have january birthdays and i I was like wait it's not january anymore (laughs) this is true this is true i don't even know why i'm wearing glasses because it's 2020 now so i should have 2020 vision boom (laughs) all right well moving on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right. So, uh, Maddie, take us through. So we're just going to jump right into it. Um, take us through maybe the questions and then I'll kind of expand on them. Okay. I've been told I've been told by our production staff that I talk too fast and I don't breathe in between. So I'm going to try to focus on. will credit myself for telling you that. Yeah. So I'm gonna focus <laughs> Repeatedly on, on those two things today. I'm proud of you. That's growth. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about that growth mindset. There you go. Yeah, okay. there you go. Great so, book, by the way. Growth Mindset, Carol Dweck. Get an Audible. <laughs> are, we, are we sponsored by Audible now? We, we are. We are sponsored okay. by Audible. Yeah. Cool. Okay. First of all, um, do they know what, as far as the buyer, do they, Do you know what you're trying to- Seller. Comp- seller. I'm sorry. I can't talk today. I'm all discombobulated because I pitched an idea and you shot me down. <laughs> I mean, in fairness, it was a terrible idea. Okay, but. moving on. It was not. Um does the seller know what they're trying to accomplish? Because there's no one size fits all approach or solution. So you need to know what you're trying to accomplish before you can seek out someone to help you. Yeah, sure. So I would say, um, uh, well, so when I wrote that, you know, know, you look very lost. Like you wrote something and you don't know where you were going with it. No, no, no. So uh, really the question is, does the agent that you are engaging, interviewing, uh, considering, you know, about to sign with, do they know what you are looking to accomplish? Oh, see, that was confusing. Yes. So um, apparently I just can't read. No, it's, it's, it's understandable. Um, So, I I mean, the real question is, do they know what you're looking to accomplish? So a lot of people, when they go to sell, they have different goals. Some people are upsizing because they're busting at the seams and they need more space. Some people are downsizing and they need to move quickly because now they have a health issue that they didn't have before and they need to get away from stairs. Some people are simply just trying to take advantage of a hot market and they're saying, hey, look, um, you know, I'm fine to stay, but if... um, you know, if I can get my price, then I'll move. Um, some people it's, you know, a loved one has passed away and they're selling the home now because they have no more need for it. Maybe, maybe they live two, you know, states away. So really does that, does that agent know and do they care enough to ask you your situation, really what you're looking to accomplish? Because depending on what you're looking to accomplish, we're going to approach this, approach this in a different manner. So one, uh, kind of a red flag is if they don't, if they just approach it like, okay, you've got a home, you said you want to sell it. I'm going to show you how to sell it. Well, what if a seller just assumes when an agent starts asking questions like that? What if they just assume that they're being nosy and then like don't want to answer the questions that the agent asks as far as their situation. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, we are being nosy because the, the more information I know about that client, the better that I can serve them and what they're ultimately trying to accomplish. Now, I've had sellers before that are a little guarded because maybe they've had a bad experience before. Maybe they felt like somebody was trying to take advantage of them or maybe they're, they're scared that, um, you know, that we're potentially or or an agent is potentially looking to take advantage of them, depending on their situation. You know, sometimes people are in very uh, vulnerable, uh, vulnerable situations where, um, 
you know, if they don't know us, they don't know kind of our heart, how we approach things, how we do business. So sometimes it takes a little bit of like relationship building, rapport building to where they let their guard down. But at the end of the day, like if I know the outcome that you are looking to accomplish, I can give you the best solution. What kind of gets a little squirrely sometimes is if you tell me the solution or, or yeah, if you tell me like the process that you want me to follow, but I don't really understand the the, the end goal because there might be a better way to skin that cat. But if I don't know, you know, what you're looking to do, then me just trying to follow the plan that you think is, is most appropriate may not be our best course of action. Yeah. You need to know the why to build your strategy. Amen. So I feel like, uh, as a rule, you kind of have more experience selling houses than the average person who's not a real estate agent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Yeah, we, we sold. We're coming up on um, coming up on my two hundredth home sale, uh, career wise. So that's pretty really? cool. Yeah, we'll have to get a cake or something, or yay, um, maybe we'll eat some kava. Uh, we'll yeah. have a special podcast. We'll episode. Like a, I'll put balloons in here. We'll have like a spinach pie or something. Um, oh something wow! Healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yikes. But no, I mean, like, you know, it's funny. I'll have people who are like, "Well, you know, Chris, we're not newbies at this. We're we've moved, you know, ten times." And I'm like, "That's cool. Like, we sold ten homes last quarter." And I, I don't say that arrogantly, but like, Boom. no, 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 we don't say that arrogantly, but it's like, okay, like, but you sold those homes at different periods of time in different markets and different locations. Like, I don't care how things were in Nebraska. Like this is Virginia. There's different laws. There's different norms. There's different things. So, um, yeah, once again, if we know what you're looking to accomplish, we can provide you a better solution. But anyway, we're getting off topic. All right. So the next thing is you want to know what the agent's experience is. Yeah. So a couple things there. Uh, how many homes have they sold? Um, and that's important not so that they just brag about their numbers, but like, so for example, yeah, we're coming up on our 200th home sale. That means that we've, we've marketed and sold 200 properties. We've negotiated 200 contracts. We've, uh, been through 200 home inspections. We've, dealt with, you know, title potential issues on a number of, of transactions. We, we've encountered different uh, situations where we've already learned those lessons. Um, and, you know, you don't want somebody that's, that's learning the business on your transaction. That's a little scary. That's like a surgeon learning how to do heart surgery on you. Like, no, I, I want to make sure that person is well-versed. Like you got like a heart surgery for dummies on a pedestal right in front of you as you're cutting into this person's heart. That's what you want, right? <laughs> I don't understand the analogy, but sure. You were just talking about a heart surgeon not like learning how to do it while they're doing the surgery. So I just said that, but I gave you a visual. Yeah. I, <laughs> we're not fighting. You don't have to get mad at me. I'm not. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so how many homes have they sold? Um, a question I always um, encourage folks to ask is how often is that agent working with sellers? Because there's two different sides of the business. There's working with buyers and working with sellers. Um, while that may seem similar, there are very different things that you have to learn. There's different skill sets. There's different systems and processes. You know, working kind of on the back end of our business, there's different processes and different things that we have in place to to help sellers than we than we do buyers. So there's way more with sellers too. There, there's a lot more deadlines that you have to keep track of. There's a lot more things that you have to keep in, uh, you know, in the know on. I feel like you kind of uh, representing a seller, you have to keep an eye on every piece of the transaction. Yeah. Whereas like a buyer, you, you have to worry about your stuff. You don't necessarily have to worry about the seller stuff as much. Whereas well, only in so much as it affects you. Right. Right. Yeah. With, with sellers, we're keeping an eye on the whole transaction because that's just kind of the nature of the beast there. So um, how much of that, you know, how much of their, their personal production, um, is working with sellers. So are, are they really set up to be able to handle your transaction? And I say that because a lot of folks will list with the agent that helped them buy the home. Um, which, you know, that agent may be great. They might be phenomenal working with sellers, but there are a lot of agents out there that just specialize in the seller or the buyer side of the business to where I like, I know there's a relationship there. I know you love them. I know, um, you know, there's that element of comfort there, but it's kind of like you really got to take a, a, a business approach to it and say like, hey, is this person really versed in in doing this? Do they, do they know what they're doing? So that's a question I would ask. Um, is that information public record? Like how, like how many transactions agents do? Because we can look it up on our end, but 
if like a homeowner wanted to look it up themselves, is that public record? Yeah. So what I would do, I would ask that agent to provide you that breakdown. And um, that's very easy to get and to do via the multiple listing service, which your agent will be a part of. So if they're not willing to provide you that information, that's kind of a red flag. Uh, but then if you don't want to ask them directly, which you shouldn't have a problem doing that, but if for whatever reason you don't, you can also go on uh, Zillow. So most agents um, catalog or have the ability to catalog all of their sales on Zillow.com. And you go to their Zillow profile and you could just see a breakdown of their sales. I think Zillow puts like a map and they put like the sellers in one color and the buyers in the other. That's cool. Um, so you can kind of do that you know, it's a quick little visual to be able to, to do that investigation. Cool. Yeah. All right. What else we got under that experience header? Um, oh, their experience in your price point and area. I think we skipped a couple, didn't we? Oh, <laughs> average days on market. Did we talk about that one? <laughs> I'm having a hard time reading today. <laughs> so much for that 2020 vision. <laughs> okay. Fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I would ask them what's their average days on market. And then I would ask what is the average days on market for your marketplace? So like, for example, um, the average days on market in 2019 in Central Virginia was 42 days on market. You can also look at that at a more micro level of like, they should prepare you a market analysis. You can look at the different comps and you could say, hey, what is the, like how long are, are homes in my neighborhood taking to sell? And then you know, how long is it taking you to sell these homes? What you're really looking for is you're looking for a measurable degree of, of difference in which they're able to get their homes sold faster than uh, the average. So kind of like, you know, when you're looking at a financial advisor, you want somebody you're, you want a fund or an advisor that can beat the market. You're looking for an agent that could beat the market. Um, just because selling a house is not fun. So the quicker you can do it, the, the, the less headache, but also typically and statistically, if you look at it, the faster a home sells, generally the more money it sells for. Yeah, but also that aver average, average, <laughs> the <laughs> yikes, the average days on market, that's just from the time that it goes active until the time it goes under contract. That doesn't include like contract close. Yeah, that's a whole different thing. Uh, days on market is from the day that listing was activated to the day uh, you ratify a contract on it. Yep. Yeah. All right, Good moving times. on. <laughs> what, else, what else we got there? I think we got a few more. How many reviews do they have? Yeah, so how many reviews do they have? Uh, social proof, you know, we, we live in a review culture. So um, if they don't have any reviews anywhere, that might be a red flag. Now we all have our, like we used to catalog all of our reviews on Zillow um, for reasons, you know, I can't go into it on this podcast. Or it's a whole different show. Um, we have now shifted those to Google, but like cumulatively, we have close to a hundred reviews, um, from past clients. If that person has no social proof, no reviews anywhere that could potentially mean that they don't have the best relationships with their clients. Only 99 of our reviews are from Allie. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. And that hundredth is from my grandmother. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, reviews are important. Um, how often do they work with sellers? We already talked about that. Talked about that. It's already on here. Um, what is their experience in, back to this one. What is their experience in your price point and area? Sure. Yeah. So you want to make sure that agent, um, handles transactions in your price point, whether that's a high price point or a low price point. Um, and part of the reason is there's different demographics and expectations, whatever price point you're in. In other words, what sells a $200,000 home in our marketplace is going to be different from what sells a $600,000 home in our marketplace. Um, so not to say there's not agents that can handle a, a wide range of price points, but if somebody's only sold homes at, in the $200,000 price point, they may not have the skill set, they may not have the knowledge of what it takes to get that $600,000 home sold what those buyers expectations are, what the buyer is looking for, what's important to those buyers. Um, you know, just the same as I've seen some like agents that are quote unquote high end agents where they only sell stuff in the upper third of our marketplace. And then they get a referral and they're, they're selling a $200,000 house and they flounder just because obviously they're, they're good at what they do, but they just don't understand that market. So hmm. you need somebody that, um, 
uh, and it's really just because it's like when you sell homes in, in certain price points or certain areas, you kind of get to know what that buyer is looking for. You kind of get to know what sells. You kind of get to know what the expectations are, what you can get away with, uh, you know, so you, you kind of learn how to sell to those buyers. You um, don't want to list your $1.5 million house in Hanover with an agent who only sells $150,000 homes in Hopewell. Yeah. I know why you're beating up on Hopewell, but sure. <laughs> it was just the first place that came to mind. Sure. Sorry, Hopewell. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> we love you, Hopewell. Okay. That's all for experience. Yep. Moving on. What is the sales and marketing approach? And is there staging is the first one. Yes. Yeah, so the sales and marketing approach. So do they have a detailed plan? Um, I feel like I don't know where to look. Um, I have that problem too. Like, do I look there or do I look at you or we've, do I look down? We've got or? two cameras. I've got Maddie here. We got Jacob. Oh, there's a second one. Yeah, there's a second camera. <laughs> um, yeah, so marketing. Do they have a detailed nice. approach? Uh, there's a lot of agents out there that their strategy is just throw it on the multiple listing service and just kind of wait for, for a sale to happen. Um, you can do that. I, I don't know if you're going to get the most amount of money for your home doing that. I don't know if it's going to sell as quickly doing that. Um, but yeah, you want to have somebody that, in my opinion, has a comprehensive approach that has a plan that makes sense to you. And that also, you know, you're doing all the right things to be able to capture the most amount of money for your home. Um, as far as staging goes, so one of the things that we do on most all of our listings, um, if they're vacant, a lot of times we won't do this, but almost all of our listings will bring in a staging consultant. Her name is Kim. She's going to be on the podcast here in two in weeks. Two weeks. Very We're excited. excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was weird. <laughs> um, but so her job is to go um, into the home with our clients and kind of uh, help them prep the home for market. So like, hey, what things do we need to get rid of? What things do we need to put away in storage? Can we reconfigure the furniture? I, I mean, it's just, you know. They go into a lot of detail too. Yeah. And, you know, once again, we're not trying to tell anybody that they need to do anything, but, you know, you're, you're selling a very exp expensive item in your house and the house itself. Yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. The way you said it sounded like an expensive item inside your house. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I was like, I mean, also, you know, it's just the house al also itself. the house. Yeah. <laughs> But, um, but no, there's, there's always prep work to do. There's always things that you could do, small tweaks and adjustments to put the property in the best light so that it ultimately sells for the most amount of money. Um, you know, same thing when I go to, when my wife and I go to sell our house, like we'll bring in a stager just because my wife does an amazing job, but you know, there's things that you, you just get so accustomed to it because you live there every day. Like it, it's it sometimes take a, an objective third party just to walk in and say like, Hey, maybe we want to move this or Hey, maybe we want to do this. So yeah, yeah stage that in. makes sense. Yep. Um, along those same lines, what recommendations are there of repairs and improvements? Yeah. So, um, once again, can the, does the agent come in there and give you any recommendations just like every home could benefit from a little bit of staging advice? Um, a lot of times there's small tweaks and adjustments, uh, as far as like impair improvements or repairs that can be made. So things like, are they taking note or are they detailed enough to take note of, Hey, when you've got, um, you know, some railings that need to be painted or does the deck need to be restained or could it stand to be, could the house stand to be power washed? Do we need fresh mulch in the beds? Um, are there improvements that we can do that will ultimately bring a return? Um, so do they have experience with what th this kind of ties back to knowing the area and the price point? Do they know what upgrades can be put into a home that are ultimately going to bring a return? Like what upgrades do, uh, buyers value? Um, and do they have like a plan that makes sense there? In other words, I see a lot of times we go into these properties where somebody said, Hey, you need to put granite countertops or you need to redo this whole kitchen. And we go in and we say, hey, look, we sell a lot of homes in this neighborhood. Um, redoing the whole kitchen is great, but you also got a lot of other dated elements within the property. Um, I don't think you're necessarily going to get that money back. Plus, you know, let me show you all these homes that didn't have upgraded kitchens that that sold. Yeah. Um, or sometimes we go in and we say, hey, like, hey, if all, like, all you need to do is like if you got a new... Um, 
kitchen appliance set or if you just put some granite in the kitchen or some other, if there's little small things that we can do to like hey this is the last missing piece um those are things we'll do but once again is, is the agent able to give you those recommendations and they are they able to give you reasoning why they're making those recommendations or is it just either they say nothing or they just say hey you just got to redo it i think any monkey can sell like a turnkey like beautiful home that that doesn't take much skill but are they able to give you sound advice on what you should do what you shouldn't do yeah plus even if um you decide not to take the recommendations at least you, you know that you have an agent who'll give them to you yeah you know that they're they're they know what they're talking about they're engaged in the process and they're thinking through this for you yeah someone yeah. asked me about improvements once and i gave them advice what'd you tell them um they were taking off the carpet on or they already took off the carpet on their stairs and like they were like, oh, is there anything I should do to make it look better? And it was like jagged at the top where they took it off. So I was like, oh, just like kind of cut that into a straight line so it doesn't look like it's like <laughs> ripped off <laughs> like a Band-Aid. Nice. They ultimately didn't listen, but, you know, I still gained trust points because yeah, you did. little old me was able to answer a question. You did your job. You yeah. did your job. For all your flooring questions. <laughs> nope. <laughs> private P DM uh, Maddie. If you want to be disappointed, definitely DM me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, are there photos and video and who is doing the photos and video? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, HD photos, which I was recently told by Jacob, our amazing <laughs> uh, marketing manager. I was always said HDR, which I thought was high definition resolution. He informed me that that was something different than high definition. Yeah. Yeah. That, that That's something else. Yeah, that's high dynamic range. Yeah. Which is... Much different. Yeah. And I still don't know what that means, but anyway. I don't know what it's that okay. means either. We laugh about payment, it. Right? That's why. Yeah. <laughs> That's like the mystery of yeah. like. <laughs> you just have people tell you things and you're like, okay, I'll pay you for that. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, no. So are they taking professional photos? Um, and when I say they, I mean, are they hiring somebody that's going to take professional photos? If the, with the exception of a very small percentage of realtors out there, if the realtor themselves is taking the photos, that's bad news bears. Um, I love looking at listings that have like all cell phone pictures. Yeah. If <laughs> they don't, my favorite. if they don't have, if that realtor does not have a professional photographer coming in with a professional camera run the other way, um, you cannot in today's day and age get away with cell phone photos. And I would, I would be bold enough to say that you can't get away with somebody that even has the right camera, but doesn't know how to use it. Would that be a fair statement, Mr. Jacob? Yeah. Um, cell phones are getting better and better, but you can't really compare to a professional camera with a photographer that knows what he's doing. Correct. Yeah. So if I were to go in and take pictures, you should run the other way. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much. But so are they doing photos? And photos is kind of like step one. That's like your Annie to get in the game. Um, I always tell our clients, like, having professional photos is not really going to make you stand out from the, the competition because pretty much, more or less, everybody's doing that or, or the large majority of agents are doing that. Um, where I would... If I was selling where I would, what I would demand or want is a video tour. And that's kind of like the next step. So pretty much everybody's doing photos now. That used to be a slight edge advantage five, 10 years ago. Not so much now. So are they taking a step further? Are they putting together a professional video tour that you can then market with the listing and then also on social and, and you know, the different mediums? Um, but that, that's a good question to ask that agent that you're considering. And you can even take it a step further and do drone footage. What? That's fancy. Yeah. Super fancy. All right. Um, <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is the online approach? Hashtag super fancy. <laughs> we should add that to all of our marketing things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is the online, online approach and social strategy? Yeah. Can their, can their transaction coordinator speak if and use words? their transaction coordinator is the worst, run the other way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so I made a note here. Um, you know, if an agent tells you that, that they're, this is like very 2003, if an agent tells you that they're going to get your, your listing on 2,000 websites, like pat them on the back and say, that's great. That cool job. <laughs> all that means is that they're putting your property in the multiple listing service. I can't stand when I hear that because it's <laughs> kind of like they're 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 like 
saying that as if that's something like this Herculean feat that they're accomplishing, simply by, I'm going to give you a dirty little secret, simply by putting a property in the multiple listing service, it syndicates out to over 2,000 websites. It's called IDX or an IDX feed. Basically, it's all these websites pull from the same feed. So if a property is in the MLS, it automatically goes to 2,000 websites. So there's no like special thing that that agent is doing if they, we're going to get some hate mail on this episode. So they're not just sitting there behind a computer for like, like 72 hours posting it putting in every single one of those 2000 websites manually no, no. i'm disappointed yeah I've, I've been doing it all this time and <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is that what's been taking you so long yep. yeah. <laughs> darn it so no so do they actually have a strategy outside of just putting an mls um so we go through with our clients our social strategy um, that's a tough one to say. Social strategy. Social strategy. <laughs> we go through Chinese, we get our braces social off, strategy. and then we talk about a social strategy. Um, we need oh, a blooper reel. Instagram, Facebook, <laughs> LinkedIn, Twitter. MySpace. MySpace. <laughs> um, no, so what is, the, what is the game plan? What is the game plan? <laughs> you started this. What is the game plan to get the property out in front of people? I keep looking at the wrong camera. To get the property out in front of people via the social mediums online, is there a strategy outside of just um, MLS? And if they cannot articulate that to you, then they probably don't have one. Um, if it's just, hey, we post it on social, great. Cool. What, what, what does that mean? Break that down for me. Um, and if they can't give you detail, that means they probably don't have a, a plan there. And then you run the other way. Run the other way and call us. Yeah, I mean, we're doing this whole show, and in reality, we could just end it and say, hire us. Are we still recording? Cool. Oh, word. <laughs> moving on. Um, how? Okay, moving on. How do they determine pricing? How do they determine pricing? This is Tough subject. always always sticky, always gets a little weird, always gets a little heated. Um, everybody gets a little tense when we talk about pricing. Um, break down the bullets for me and I'll, I'll go through them. Okay. Number one, red flag. If they ask you, if they ask you, want you to determine the price, that's not a sentence. Uh, no, but it's a, it's a bullet point. So, <laughs> Hey, once again, another red flag warning. Maybe we can have Jacob like put like a red flag little thing in the, in the video. Yeah. He's like, great. Thanks for creating more work for me. <laughs> um, so here's the deal. If that agent, now we ask our clients, hey, do you have like an expectation of what you think this property should sell for? But if they say, hey, what do you want to sell the property for? And you give them a number and they say, great. And then they're just like, let's just write that in the contract. That's a problem. It's that, a lack of professionalism. Well, that essentially means that they are just telling, they're either lazy and they don't want to run the numbers on the property. They don't have a spine and they're not willing to confront you. Oof. On, yeah. They're getting dragged I'm, today. I'm, I'm salty today. I see it. Um, no, they don't have enough fortitude, courage, whatever you want to call it, professionalism to be able to confront you on an unrealistic price expectation. Or they're just pandering to you and they're saying, hey, whatever you, I just want to get your listing because I feel like I've accomplished something just by getting you to sign the contract. So whatever you want Whatever I think I need to tell you to make you happy, that's what we're going to go with. That's a huge, huge red flag. If they don't have an opinion on um, what the property, the price, what the price of the property should be, that's an issue. Now, that's not to say we disagree with clients all the time. I mean, there's sometimes where we come in and we say, yeah, I agree with you on the price and here's the reasoning why. But I guess maybe I would throw out a challenge. If they, if they agree with you on price, I would question them why they agree with you on price. Yeah. Because go a little bit deeper, go one layer deeper, peel that onion back one layer and see if they actually have an understanding of, of why they think that price is, is appropriate. Well, plus also if they can't even have that tough conversation with you, like let's say they have, they get a contract, then you can't expect that agent to have the tough conversations with the other side and yeah. work on your behalf. Well, we always joke around with folks when they're like, hey, will you discount your commission? And we say like, no. And they said, well, you know, Johnny down the street did it. I'm like, that's great. Like, hey, if Johnny couldn't hold the line with you on, on his money, like how do you think he's going to deal like with somebody like myself, you yeah. know, when I'm representing the buyer and we're working against you? Um, You're probably a tough person to negotiate with. Um, I don't know. We've, we've had some negotiations. Yeah. But also I have no spine. 
<laughs> so that's different. Yikes. <laughs> Hashtag no spine. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag no, fi- no spine. Hashtag super fancy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that. All right. Next, is the pricing realistic or optimistic? Yeah, so this goes back to like, okay, can they can they explain to you the rationale behind the pricing? Can they can they give you the reasoning as far as why they arrived at the price they arrived? Um, and based on that explanation, you know, in your heart of hearts, now we all want as much money as we can for our properties, and I think we are all optimistic, you know, when we go to sell our real estate that we want, you know, like. Uh, even realtors, you'll see like even good realtors, you'll see like where they get optimistic on pricing, but you know, really st- take a step back and look and say, okay, like the pricing strategy they're giving me, is that realistic based on the market or is that just optimism, you know, through the either just like maybe being overly optimistic naivety, naivete. <laughs> oh, okay. My bad. Hashtag super fancy. <laughs> um, Yikes. Yeah, so are they being realistic or optimistic? I beat that one to death. I <laughs> think you have. Um, can they offer you multiple pricing options? Yeah, so once again, it goes back to kind of... <laughs> again? Again. You said again. <laughs> again. It's all my Canadian friends. Again. Oh, God. No, they say about. About. <laughs> the process. I'm glad you're Stephen not Canadian. Stephen Kim, what's up, man? Give me some, give me some love on, uh, on social. Um, if you watch Letterkenny, a lot of Canadians say a whole lot of other things. Oh, really? Yeah, you should watch Letterkenny. It's a great. What show. is that? It's, <laughs> it's like a bunch of good old boys. Good old like Canadian boys. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's like good old um, Buckingham County boys, but they're Canadian. Okay. All right. It's. I think you'd like it. Okay. It's a great show. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> We're um, endorsed by Letter Kenny. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. So, uh, multiple pricing strategies. Kind, kind of going back to the original conversation of like, do they ask you what your your goals are? So, if I have somebody that is looking to test the market, wants to get, you, you know, doesn't necessarily have to move they just want to move if they can get their price. Like, okay, that's one pricing strategy. Like, hey, we're going to price it up here knowing that we're being ambitious on price. But if somebody's like in a dire straits where they need to sell quickly, um, or, you know, based on the time of year, maybe we're heading into the slower season, um, we might go with a different strategy of like, hey, we don't really have the margin for error here. So we're going to price it right at fair market value from the get go to get this thing moving on. But can they give you different options and once again can they explain the strategy behind those different options or is it a one size fits all here's the price and it's either like way too high or it's um you know super low just to get it cheap to get it sold Um, yeah yeah sounds like that agent doesn't know what they're doing (laughs) moving on (laughs) moving on what's next um, can they explain their price slash market value to you in a way that makes sense? If not, are they making up numbers? Yeah. What, so we kind of hit on this already. Like, can they explain that? Can they give you an explanation of the price or is it literally just pulling numbers out of their backside? Um, which is not good. No. Yeah. Um, are they willing to confront you on unrealistic price expectations? That really sounds like a battle. Like, well, are no, they ready to... It's not you. though, but if like, if they can't, if they're just going to go along with whatever that you like, for example, like if I have a personal trainer and I say like, Hey, I want to get ready for the Olympics, which I don't, but like, if wow. I say like, Hey, I want to be able to sleep in, drink every night and eat, you know, a pound of cake every day. And they're not willing to confront me on, on that. Like, hey, this is not going to get you to the Olympics. <laughs> like, then if they just tell me whatever I want to hear, then I'm ultimately not going to get the goal. Yeah. So, like, if, tough love. if your goal is to sell, yeah, sometimes we do have to confront our clients and give them tough love of, like, hey, we care enough to to confront you on this of, like, hey, you know, like, if we do X, we're not going to get Y. Um, so, like, is that agent strong enough? Um you know, we don't fight with clients just to fight with clients, but or is that agent strong enough to kind of confront you if you have a misunderstanding or um, uh, an unrealistic expectation? It's kind of fun too when you do have that situation arise and you do have to make that 
confrontation and like they're like no i don't agree with you i think you're totally wrong and then it plays out and it turns out that we were right all along yeah which i mean we don't always it's not about being right but you know yeah and we don't get it right every time but once again kind of ties back to does that agent have the experience to say like hey i've been in this situation before um nobody has a crystal ball but like i've seen this play out before and this is how it's probably going to go um so once again if you do x you know, you're going to get Y and, and not Z or whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What is the game plan if we find that we overpriced? Yeah. So once again, do they have a strategy uh, in place for um, if you find that you're overpriced? So with our clients, usually what we tell them is, hey, we're going to go 30 days or 20 showings, whichever comes first. And if we're not getting traction in my price points, you can tell within 30 days whether or not you've overpriced a property or if there's an issue. So is there some type of structure in place where, hey, we're going to review this within a set amount of time um, if we find we're not having success? So with our clients, you know, usually it's that 30-day review of, hey, we've been on the market now 30 days. Here's the showings. Here's the, here's the feedback we're getting. Here's the interest we're seeing. Um, should we continue on the course we're on? Should we make an adjustment? Um, but is there some type of process in place? And once again, if somebody works with a lot of sellers, they typically have some type of, of process in place. Because they, they know a few things because they've seen a few things. There you go. Is that like a song? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know where I got that reference. I just yeah. heard it the other day and it's stuck in my brain. It sounds cool. It sounds really good. It does sound really good, yeah, doesn't yeah, yeah. it? I said yeah. something good. Yeah. Um, you, you did. Oh, good. Also, um, I've only like worked for you for a year, but... It's been a long year. <laughs> it has really been a long year. You've, you've got a couple more grays than you had when I started. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but I feel like there's only been like a handful of things that we've seen that we haven't seen repeatedly. Yeah, it's... it's Not just about price, but about in, like in general. Yeah, you run into the same situations over and over and over again, pretty much. Yeah, so we've got the experience to say we've seen this before so yeah yeah establish authority i mean sure yeah listen i'm just trying to help your cause <laughs> this is why i don't talk that much moving on <laughs> establishing authority <laughs> now i am establishing authority how will you be communicated with how will you be notified of showings showings showing showings <laughs> Showing showings? <laughs> showing showings. Showing showings. Did you showings? write this at like 930, right? Uh, before this you went is, to this bed? is at like 530 this morning. Um, showing showings. Yeah. So once again, uh, going back to plan, going back to strategy, going back to process. What is their process to communicate with you? I can't tell you how many agents I've talked to, like buddies of mine who I like. I'm throwing them under the bus. I'm not going to name names, but like <laughs> you tell them like, hey, like, so, you know, like they say like, oh, like whatever this deal didn't work out. I'm like, Oh, like, did you notify the client? And it's like, there's no set notification schedule. There's no communication schedule established, which is crazy. Um, but like, yeah. So they, do they have, can they articulate to you? Like, Hey, this is how you're going to be communicated with most people I find when they're on the market, they want to know what the heck's going on. So I feel like that's a, a fair thing to want to know. Yeah. I, I think your it, house, I think it's a very fair thing. Um, so what is their process for communicating with you? Um, when will that be? Is it on a set time every week? Like we do our, we update our clients every Tuesday afternoon. They can reach out to me, you know, the other five, six days of the week, but every Tuesday afternoon, they know they're going to hear from us, whether there's an update or not, we're just going to be checking in saying, Hey, this is what's happening. Like, do you need anything? Um, so what does that look like? How are they going to be notifying you of showings and feedback? If the agent says, they're going to just text you anytime there's a showing that's problematic. Uh, we use a very cool tool called showing time, which basically coordinates all that and, and keeps it all on schedule so that a client can go back and, um, they control the process and they can all also reference that they can go back and they could see, okay, like, Hey, we got those three showings on Saturday and you know, it kind of makes people feel like they're less at the mercy of their realtor and they have more of like a, a voice in the, yeah. Cause a lot of people feel like, that their agent just like reaches out and says, Hey, I got somebody that wants to see it like in 45 minutes. And they basically feel obligated to 
you know, we do things for our clients that so we set it up like lead time. So basically if somebody wants to show a property as soon as possible, the earliest they can show it is an hour from that time that they request it because it's, it's not fair to our clients, especially if they're living in a house, if they have kids or whatever pets like to say, Hey, you got to be out of your house in 20 minutes. It's just, it's, sometimes we do more than an hour. Yeah. Sometimes we do two, three hours. So, um, once again, what's the plan there that that agent has? All right. And we kind of already touched on this, but is there a regular communication plan? Yeah, we already hit on that. Yeah. Okay. Next, are they a one person show or do they have a team? Yeah. So oh, it's a very hard in today's day and age to be a one man band. You know, working behind the scenes, how many things that we need to do, how many things we need to stay on top of, um, how many people need to be kept in the loop, how many things need to be communicated with. So if that agent does not have an amazing transaction coordinator, does not have an amazing marketing manager. Like, are they doing all that work themselves? And if so, do you have confidence in that individual that they're going to be able to do that? Do they sleep? Do they eat? Do yeah. they ever have any relationships? Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you know, is it, Hey, they're doing this all themselves. Um, and then, you know, it goes to the question, do you have confidence that that individual can do that along with all the other clients that they have, or is this going to be a situation where they take your listing and then they deliver a terrible customer experience just because they're kind of a, uh, burn and churn type operation. So yeah, that's a question that I would ask, like, who are the, who are the other players on the team? If they say, Hey, it's just me by myself for me personally, knowing what we know, that would be a red flag. Yep. You need to have someone who has a great transaction coordinator. Hey, man. I mean, you could, you, you could give or take a marketing manager, but. Oh boy. <laughs> this is true. Oh, <laughs> yikes. All right. Well, that was all the questions. Do you think there's any other questions before we jump into the fire round? I feel like we kind of, that was, that was pretty. Those uh, are the big ones. That, that was ad nauseum. That was, wow, throwback to one of our first shows. Yep. I had yep. to like think about that for a minute. And I was like, that's not a word. Oh, wait. It actually it is. is. And we proved that. All <laughs> right. So now let's jump into the fire rounds and look at our questions from the socials. All right. Jumping in the fire round questions. Uh, Jacob hit us with what the Facebook and the Instagram want to know. All right, so the first question is going to be, uh, how accurate is Zillow when pricing out a house? Madison? Um, oh, I wasn't prepared to answer this one. Usually not really, right? Because there's a lot of factors that go into pricing a house, including comps and stuff. So I don't know where Zillow gets their <laughs> numbers, but I feel like they don't have the, um, act, they're just the, a robot. They, they don't so, have the comps and stuff? <laughs> I don't, I feel like they, I was going to say they don't have the experience, but I think that's kind of different. Like there's more human elements to pricing a house that Zillow may not be aware of because Zillow is just a robot. Yeah. Well, what Maddie said is very true. Uh, Zillow is not was a human. Right? Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> in a, in a roundabout way. Okay. No, but, um, so the thing to know about Zestimus, that that's a question that we get a lot is like, Hey, Zillow says it's worth X. You say it's worth Y. Where's the disparity coming from? Um, I just had this conversation this morning. Zillow is an algorithm or, or Zestimus an algorithm. So, um, I used to know it cold, but they take a lot of different data points and they kind of put them all together and then they come up with an estimate. Some of them are price per square foot. Some of them are, you know, sold values versus tax assessment values. And they kind of weigh these things differently. Uh, a couple things that Zillow can't determine. Zillow cannot determine the condition of your property. Um, so if, you know, you got a super nice property or if you have a dog of a property, Zillow doesn't know the difference between what's sold. And of course you don't have a dog, not you, somebody else, the person a sitting dog next to of you. A property. No, but I mean like if, if a property dogs is, aren't bad, dogs are perfect. So I, your point is not made here. I like dogs. This is the fire round. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Shut up. No, but so Zillow can't determine those things. So that's, that's something to keep in mind. Um, I'm pretty sure Zillow can't determine school districts either. So like we've got some, there's some neighborhoods where, you know, on one side of this main road, it's XYZ school district on another one. It's, you know, arguably a better school district um, or, you know, people value it more. So because they're in close proximity, those comps would kind of like be pulling for each other. 
and it would give you false values because, hey, the people are willing to pay more to be in this school district than they are in this one. So there's some natural errors that come about just given the fact that there's certain data points that Zillow is not going to be able to compute. So I was right. Humans versus robots. Because that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was just kind of saying it a different way. Than I think you were said. probably saying it better, but I think also I was correct. So yeah, you were. Pat on the back. You were. Good job. <laughs> Good job, Manny. All right. Thank you. How much does staging a house cost? Um, well, it depends what you're doing. Uh, so we do a staging consultation where basically we have a, a staging consultant come in and kind of help people with what they already have for the most part. We'll, we'll bring in small things if needed. Um, and that's not as expensive. What gets pretty expensive pretty quick is bringing in furniture. Um, and we typically don't recommend that because of the cost, but then also because, you know, people are smart. You know, if you've got, usually that money is better spent fixing any potential issues within the property. So like if the paint needs to be touched up, if the carpet needs to be replaced, let's put the money into those things versus bringing in a couch that we think is going to cost people to overlook, you know, the furniture. What about virtual or, or staging? The, um, yeah, that's something I'm looking into. I, I kind of like it. Um, just because it can, you know, you can show people in a picture like this is what it could look like. But then again, once they get to the house. They know it's a lie. Yeah. And until, you're a fraud. Until they have like hologram staging. Um, that would be so cool. Patent pending. Let's work on that. Okay. Hologram staging. So New project. Anyway. Hey, Jacob, we're going to need that by the end of this week. I'm going to need a proposal. Oh, already uh, have it before done. lunch oh. tomorrow. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're putting in a Google Classroom for you to work oh, on. Oh, perfect. <laughs> That's my lifeblood. All right. Um, am I better to list with someone that has a smaller client base or does a lot of business? Face or base? Base. Base. So like... A smaller client face is what you thought, what he thought he said? That's what I thought he said. Base. How, how is that, that sensical? <laughs> we, <laughs> we only work with clients that have small faces. Um, <laughs> um, Madison, what do you think? I've got an opinion, but... Um, I think you want someone who does a higher volume because usually those people are more equipped to help more people, yeah. which is good because they have the systems and processes to help a large number of people like we do. Yeah. So I'm very bad at answering these questions. No, you're fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so like I hear this sometimes like when we're competing for a listing or whatever, they say, oh, well, XYZ only takes on a handful of clients at a time um, and therefore they're going to give my situation more um, attention. And I feel like that's usually an excuse for like that person's not good, doesn't do it. Like I guess the question is like why do they not do a lot of business? Is there a reason? Because usually if they're good at what they do, um, they're doing more than just a handful of clients at a certain time. Um, so I, I feel like we do a high volume, but we still give all of our clients equal attention. Yeah. Well, I think the more, the question is like, do they have the systems and the processes set up and the people in place and the leverage in place, uh, to be able to handle whatever volume of transactions they're doing? Um, I know agents that do things two transactions a month and it's an absolute I was going to say a word but I'm not it's a it's an absolute crap show um ah. because they just they're not organized and they don't have any systems in place they don't have any checklists or anything so like it's a nightmare for those two transactions and then I know agents that do 20 transactions a month and it's an amazing experience so I think it more falls on do they have the systems and processes set up like think of Disney. Like you go to Disney, it's an amazing experience. Like there's hundreds of thousands of people that go through Disney every year. Um, and because they have systems, Jacob's laughing. Jacob used to work for Disney. Uh, apparently working for Disney is not as magical as, as being a uh, there's, customer of Disney. There's very little magic when working for Disney. That's like okay. going to your favorite well, restaurant and seeing how they make the food. Dis you can't do that anymore. Disney's a big company. So let's hope they don't sue us for, for, for libel. But no, Oof. like, for example, like Disney provides a great experience. They they do that for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people every year. 
Um, and they probably do a better job than if the three of us tried to like do an amusement park. You well, know? Jacob did work at King's Dominion also. Yeah. So I, mean, I think we, I don't know if the real estate thing doesn't work out. Well, so like you tell me, like King's Dominion obviously services less people per year than Disney, but I would imagine going to Disney is probably a better experience than going to King's Dominion. Yeah. Nothing. 100%. Yeah. And it's just because of mostly, like you said, their systems, their customer service, their training, how many people they have. Yeah. I mean, there was like 200 people working in a restaurant. King's Minion doesn't have a restaurant that has more than 30. Yeah. So bigger team. Yeah. Product. Absolutely. It's like, it's like going to Chick-fil-A or going to Arby's. Arby's oh. is like, there's like two people in the world that keep it in business. I'm one of them, but, <laughs> but, but Chick-fil-A, they always say, I'm hungry, but Chick-fil-A, they always say like my pleasure. They're always so nice to you. So even if you're not like, it's the, it's the Lord's chicken, it's the Lord's chicken. Even if you're not like, you know what? I want Chick-fil-A today in the back of your mind. You might just a little bit, a little bit be like, wow, Chick-fil-A sounds good because you know, you're going to go there and someone's going to be real nice to you. Super polite. <laughs> Hashtag super polite. <laughs> Hashtag super polite. All right, moving Hashtag on. Super fancy. This is the this is fire rush. <laughs> okay. It's uh, not as much fire. This is like a smoldering, you know, fire. A candle fire. I yeah. mean, a candle round. How do I search and find an agent if I don't want to use a friend of a friend type of agent? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I think asking for referrals is a good thing. Um, there's a lot of easy ways you can go online and see who's selling a lot of homes in your area. Like you can do a, a, a search in Zillow um, for your zip code and you can see who's selling a lot of properties. You just call us if you're in Central Virginia. Easy, problem solved. Check that box. Um, but now, uh, yeah, searching online. Um, I do think reviews uh, are, are powerful. I think referrals are powerful, um, but make sure you're just not getting the referral and going to that person, make sure you're, you're getting the referral and then doing your own research. Yes. Unless someone refers you to us, then just blindly trust them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, last question is who's your favorite person on million dollar listing? What's million dollar listing? Really? Do, do you want to, <laughs> what is it? Fire her now. Or <laughs> do you, do you know after the podcast? What no, is that we though? Need to, we need to get a laptop back first. True. What um, is what is that? Million Dollar Listing is a show on TV. Is it one of those HD HDTV? It's shows? one of those HD. It's one of those HD <laughs> TV I know shows. About property. It's, okay. it's one of them TV programs. I know about I know about Property Brothers, and I also know about the one where they the tiny house one. All right, so homework assignment tonight. <laughs> Go home and do that. Um, you know. Like, I know that stuff is so staged and fake. It's kind of like, it's hard for me to watch, but wow, I would say got too much integrity. No, it's just like, <laughs> it's like if you watch a show about transaction coordinators, would you want to go home and watch a show about transaction coordinators? Or would you be like, enough's enough. Like I'm watching. So why do you watch real estate shows? I don't, I haven't watched in a while, but I will say, um, I'm a fan of Ryan Serhant. He's got his own YouTube channel. He does great things. Ryan Serhant. What's up, man? Not to be confused um, with Ryan Seacrest. No, not at all. <laughs> so if I had to pick one, and then I liked Luis, like the Puerto Rican guy. He just had like so much energy. Like he was just like off the charts energy all the time. Where's so. he from? He's from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. <laughs> How do you say? You live in South Florida. You said it kind of right, but without the theatrics. Puerto Rico. Okay. But I was going to say he's not from like, Turkey. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, that was today's show. Questions to ask when interviewing an agent. Appreciate y'all tuning in. Hit us up on the social channels. Um, subscribe. Hit the bell. Like us. Comment. If there's anything you want us to see, uh, you want us to talk about, let us know. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for joining us for the Chris Elliott Real Estate Show. If you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, please contact Chris Elliott at chris at chriselliottrealestate.com or by phone at 804-980-1898. And please join us again next time for the Chris Elliott Real Estate Show.